Welcome back from the break. Interesting conversation on Cancer Day. I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, we're switching to the forestry commission now, uh, you know, talking about climate change and its effects uh, on our forest and so and so. And joining me uh, to have this discussion are um, Sena Dadziwa Tabika. Yeah. Uh, from, uh, who's a senior research officer at the Ghana Cocoa Board, um, Roslyn Fosua Ejei Zuta, the director of climate change at the Forestry Commission, and Thomas Yao Jambra, the assistant manager at the Forestry Commission. You're all welcome to New Thank Day. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for you having so us. much, Crystal. Thank <laughs> you for having us. I like the smells uh, <laughs> going around this morning. I'll, I'll speak to you um, first and foremost, Roslyn. Okay. What does the um, climate change phenomenon even mean to the Forestry Commission? Because I understand that in every industry, climate change uh, means something different. Exactly. So with the Forestry Commission, what does that mean? Thank you so much, Crystal, and thank you to all our viewers this morning for joining us. Um, this discussion on climate change, I remember two years ago, we were right here on this set um, for yet another educative program on climate change. What climate change really means, as you rightly put it, it is sectorial. So the energy sector has how it deals with climate change. Uh -huh. The transport sector has how it deals with climate change. When you come into the forestry sector, we play a unique role. Now, when you talk about climate change, it's about emissions of greenhouse gases, uh -huh. notably carbon dioxide, methane gas, nitrous oxide. But in the forestry sector, as you might well remember your photosynthesis yes. uh, when you were all growing up in GHS or SHS. Plants use carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So when we have more green leafy plants or green leafy trees, it means they are sequestering this carbon dioxide. They are taking it out of the atmosphere. Mm. So in the forestry sector, when we plant more trees and we leave the trees standing, it's very, very important. Mm. Then it means that they are taking out more of the carbon dioxide that is causing this climate change. And when we take out the trees, we cut off their ability to absorb more. Mm. When we burn the trees for wood for production, then it means we have released all the carbon back into the atmosphere. Yeah. So we are where we are. That's why the forestry sector, we call it um, as a sink and a source. Okay. So it depends on how you manage it. If you keep the trees, you are sinking in the carbon. If you are cutting down the trees, it means you are a source of climate change. Ooh, and okay. for us, we are the only sector that plays this unique role. If you get into the energy sector, I mean, they are not sequestering anything. Mm. It's just about probably reducing your energy budget, either by using renewables. Mm. But for the forestry sector, we can do both. Okay. And so globally, the, the forestry sector has become very, very important in discussions mm. all up front. And a lot of uh, attention is being given to this particular sector because if we plant a lot more trees and we keep them standing, yes. it contributes about one third of the global climate change solution. Amazing. Very, very amazing. A whole one third. That's a mm. huge number. Exactly. Right. Amazing. Right. Um, so um, I'll come to you, Yao, now. Um, what's, what is the Forestry do, uh, Commission then doing about cli climate change? So as Rosalind rightly pointed, um, the for mm -hmm. forest is a unique type of sector, mm -hmm. a sink and an emitter at the same time. At the same time. And globally, climate change discussions happen glo at the global level. Globally, at, within the forest sector, what we have is called reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation. Mm -hmm. And simply put, red plus. And when you come to Ghana, the Forestry Commission handles all forest sector related activities. activities. So Forestry Commission is in charge of Red Plus in Ghana. Okay. And um, one key thing that Forestry Commission, through its partners, has developed over the period is the development of, of what we call a Red Plus strategy. Okay. And within that strategy, we have programs across the length and breadth of Ghana. Mm. And we have one unique program called the Ghana Cocoa Forest Red Plus program, mm. where the proponents are mainly Cocoa Board and okay. the Forestry Commission. Mm -hmm. So we realized that co cocoa needs forest. Mm -hmm. And cocoa, when it's not done sustainably, yeah. leads to emissions. So we've come up with this program, one, to halt further extension into forest areas, okay. and two, to also intensify cocoa production. Okay. Such that if you have a very small area, we are going to increase the yield in cocoa production. Okay. So it's a win-win situation. Mm. You have your forest and you have Standard. increase in cocoa yield. Okay. And you know Ghana depends on cocoa. Indeed. In, in Ghana, you go to a certain place, and when you mention Ghana, the response is cocoa. Cocoa, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so you can't do, and cocoa can't do without, can't do with, without forest. Yeah. So it's a symbiotic relationship. relationship. We need each other 
That's why you've come up with this particular program. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yes. And Sana, I yes. know you work with Coco Board. Yes, I do. And today is what? Uh, World Coco Day. Yesterday. Yesterday, Yesterday was, was Coco Day. Coco yes. Day. Amazing. Yes, yeah, so we celebrated it in Sunyani, mm. yeah, where the chief executive was there and all the farmers and the um, members of staff mm. of Coco Board were there to grace the day. Mm. Yeah. We've been talking about the Red Plus uh, project. And I believe that also has to, something to do with Cocoa Board. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Um, so since we, we've talked about it, can you also touch yes, on that? Yes. So um, Cocoa Board is the legally the sole regulator of the cocoa industry. Okay. So we uh, cocoa, coffee, and share. So um, we take care of cocoa matters from production right up to marketing. So we are in charge of everything cocoa related. Okay. So we came, we partnered with Forestry Commission because, as Thomas said, cocoa is a forest plant. It needs the forest to thrive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And um, because it needs the forest to thrive, we have to improve our forest cover such that cocoa can also thrive. Yeah. So that with the program, we are able to sustainably grow cocoa whilst mm -hmm. also protecting the forest because mm -hmm. they go hand in hand, hand, in hand. which is very necessary. Yeah. So um, as um, it was in news um, this morning, yeah. cocoa prices have increased Indeed. by over 8%. So imagine if we are able to get more production, it means yeah. more money for the farmer, more mm -hmm. money for the country in the end. So that's the idea. The idea of the program is to, is to increase, double the, the yield on half of the land we are using now. So if a farmer has probably 18 hectares, hectares. we expect that for nine hectares, he's able to get double of what he would have got amazing. for the 18 hectares. Mm -hmm. So, so that would be amazing. Exactly. 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 We don't want to compromise the forest in okay. this. So yeah. there's also strict enforcement guidelines because Great. there's no guarantee that if I'm making... Um, what Senna said on two hectares, yes. I shouldn't expand my land area. Yes. There's always an impetus for somebody to do more. Yeah. And, uh, there should be regulations in there that enforce the law to prevent further encroachment so that we also protect the forest and then put in a conscious effort to restore the forest. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Speaking of restoring the, the forest, mm -hmm. you know now uh, we are speaking about you know, the plastic menace, Mm -hmm. uh, how you know we want to ban we're thinking that the government should ban plastics uh, mm -hmm. single-use plastics and all mm -hmm. of that uh, another alternative would then mean you know we have to go to paper bags mm -hmm. paper, you know uh, packaging and all of that uh, which one of you would take <laughs> the question uh, what would that um, what would that mean to the forestry commission because okay. you know trees equals paper so exactly. how would that affect um, your commission as well I think it's a very good um, thought that we are having um, to ban these plastics, the use of these plastics, and getting into biodegradable paper is, uh, is a very, very good idea. It's in no way going to affect the growth of our forest if we put in a very good strategy. Oh. So we can plant species specifically for paper production okay. on a very good rotational basis, as we have done with our woodlots for okay. energy production. And so you have a piece of land. It shouldn't be a forest reserve. There are so many other lands. If you consider the area of land in Ghana and the forest reserve, I mean, the, the magnitude is in no way compared to the other areas which are not under forest reserves. Okay. So we can have these lands come into agreement with communities. Mm -hmm. They release community lands or with traditional authorities where mm -hmm. we plant these species specifically to feed that industry to produce paper mm -hmm. on a very good rotational basis. And um, these species are mostly fast growing. Okay. So you yeah. don't even need that length of time, time that you would have needed for indigenous species to grow. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a very good idea. We can do this and do it very well sustainably. And we we can even consider other raw materials other than uh, trees. trees. Bamboo yeah. is a very good source of paper it's production. True. Very, very good. If you get into Asia, mm -hmm. there were times where um, China and India had bans on cutting down of trees. Mm. They transformed their industries with bamboo. bamboo. And so that's why at the Forestry Commission now, we have a bamboo and rattan unit, newly set up. Nice. Exactly. To get into these emerging technologies and how they can support the wood industry as an alternative so yeah. that we relieve the pressure of the forest. Yeah, yes. Oh, okay. and, and just to add to what Rosalind rightly pointed out, um, mm -hmm. in 2016, Forestry Commission launched um, a plantation strategy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And within that strategy, we've made provisions of, for some of these exactly. sustainable sourcing mm -hmm. of paper, wood, lots, and all exactly. that within yeah. the strategy. Exactly. So we've, I think we saw the vision 
long oh, before. Long before. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so that, that's fine. Yeah. And, and, and uh, another component of the Red Plus program is the Climate Smart Production Standard. So okay. it's a standard that gives protocols as to what farmers and other industry players should follow in able to sustainably produce um, cocoa whilst protecting the forest. So in Cocoa Board, we provide free seedlings, economic tree seedlings, the okay. farmers, um, in addition to the cocoa seedlings. Mm -hmm. So that can be an avenue for us to channel this, where we provide um, tree seedlings that will be able to go into the paper production, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. fast yielding, res uh, climate mm -hmm. resilient trees, exactly. so that we can use that, that avenue to also enhance that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. You said economic tree, tree seedlings. seedlings. Yes. What are these economic trees? Okay, so they are, they are trees, um, trees that have economic value. So right. yes, yeah, so they sense. can be at a point it can be harvested, harvested. and used. But as you are harvesting, you are, you are, you are planting again. Back. Exactly. exactly. Amazing. So, right. so it, it's in putting all these together, it's not just one source of income for the farmer. Yeah. Yeah. You are getting something from cocoa. You are getting something from, from something else. And so yeah. this whole concept is also bringing on board additional livelihood. Mm. Alternative and additional, yes, yes. Alternative Amazing. and additional livelihood. Yeah. yeah to a farmer who undertakes some of these practices. Exactly. Yeah. So, sorry. Uh, uh, I was thinking of what Thomas was saying, especially with our rehabilitation program. Yeah. So for our old and, and diseased farms, yeah. we rehabilitate. Sometimes we have to cut this for the CSSVD, which is a viral disease. Yeah. We have to cut down the whole tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whilst in the process of cutting down mm -hmm. the trees on the farm, the farmer should be able to get something else to, to get mm -hmm. his livelihood. So mm -hmm. it, it helps with the rehabilitation program too. That's really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Forestry Commission is doing things. Exactly, yeah. together with Coco Board. We are doing a lot of things. Amazing. Yeah. All right, so your event is when again? Okay, so in all that we have said, yeah. we have come a long way. We've gone through a 10 year period of sensitizing people, yes. creating awareness, and finally, we have signed our first emission reduction payment agreement with the World Bank nice. to say that we are going to reduce these greenhouse gas emissions yes. from cocoa production. Mm -hmm. And on the 4th of October at the Accra International Conference Center, His Excellency, the President of Ghana himself, mm -hmm. Nana Kufuado, is going to launch this program. Nice. Um, I'll do it, uh, invite everybody, private sector companies, traditional authorities, local community, media, because we need advocacy. Yes, yeah. Everybody should come on board. Let's champion this. Let's do this. And more importantly, because of the climate aspect, mm. and he being the co-chair of the SDG advocates, yes. yeah. it's very, very crucial on the agenda. So on the 4th, 4th of October, October, Accra International Conference Accra Center, International 11 a.m. Okay. Yeah. We are all meeting there. Yes. Yeah. We are producing <laughs> Everybody cocoa. is invited. Everybody, everybody is invited. Everybody. And we are increasing yes. our forests. One more thing, please. When we say 4th <laughs> of October, right. it looks too far. Yes. It's just this Friday. This Friday. <laughs> this Friday. <laughs> That's literally two days away. Exactly. exactly. At the conference exactly. center. Conference exactly. center. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Yes. Okay, so we'll see you there. Everybody's right. invited. Yes. Yes. Thank, Thank, you so Thank you so much. Thank you too. Uh, <laughs> Rosalind Fosuaje Zuta, Director of Climate Change Initiative for Accra Climate Change. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.